Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is March the 20th, 2018. Let's talk about one of the better fights on the board right now. Former welterweight champion Jesse Vargas taking on former welterweight champion Adrian Broner. By the way, both guys have won titles in other weight classes. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there are times when the sport we love, boxing, needs to be booed, right? Times when reporters need to, at press conferences, ask hard questions of the combatants to try to figure out what's going on here. Now, let me openly boo boxing here because somebody is going to have to explain to me how a former welterweight champion like Jesse Vargas can be fighting a former welterweight champion in Adrian Broner and yet the fight is being fought at a catch weight of 144 pounds. Whose bright idea was this? Right? What's the story guys? Do you lack confidence to actually fight at 147 pounds. Is the water too deep at 147? It's ridiculous. I mean, I, you know, this catch weight thing has reached absurdity, right? I don't, I don't get it. Wasn't that Adrian Broner beating Paulie Malinaji? Did that Marcus Maidana fight, title fight at 147? Scar Broner so much that he's afraid to fight at 147. For the record, by the way, based on styles, based on styles, I believe Broner should not only be fighting at 147. I think Broner would be a big time player at 154. Someone's going to have to explain to me why Broner, who always has weight problems, right? Who? Opponents know. Adrian Granados, days before the fight, was told, hey, forget the contract, forget the agreed upon weight. We're going to have to have this fight one weight class up. Right? That's how unreliable, that's the word, Adrian Broner is at weigh ins. Right? This is a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. situation. Right? The guy has problems making weight. You're at an Adrian Broner weigh in and you're actually intrigued as to whether or not he's going to be able to make weight. Then you see him in some fights. He's fighting Mikey Garcia. Now keep in mind, this is a former welterweight champion. He's fighting Mikey Garcia at 140. And Broner, who's a master in the pocket, is on his back foot running away from the pocket. Running away from a guy who, right, hardly has any experience at 140. And here's Broner, a former welterweight champ, conceding the pocket at junior welter to a guy with no junior welter experience. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. By the way, let's talk about Jesse Vargas. You want to see a great fight. You want to see a guy really close to show. You want to see a masterful performance by a guy against a fighter who currently is the WBO 154 pound champion. Right? The champ at 154, a guy who beat Miguel Cotto. If you want to see somebody close the show, knock him down, dominate him. I want you to look at the film of Jesse Vargas against Saddam Ali. Right. Folks, Vargas not only beats Ali, right, who's one weight class up from welterweight now. He stops him. So you can imagine, I'm, I'm utterly amazed 
that a guy who really should be fighting against Ali at 154, keep in mind, Vargas is 5'10". He's 5'10". Right? Vargas, who himself is a former welterweight champion, is fighting this fight at 144. What? What's going on? What am I missing? Right? Let me just say this, too. Sometimes we, the fans, don't get the whole story. Right? The way Broner was on his bike, really, the guy... You know, if I owned a bike manufacturer, I would have approached Broner and said, hey, please endorse my product after seeing him run from Mikey Garcia in their bout. After Broner was on his bike against Mikey Garcia, I started to think, man, I know Garcia is a great puncher. But wow, is Broner himself with a greater than 60% KO ratio this afraid of being hit by a 140-pounder? You started to wonder if maybe Broner's getting cuffed around in the gym. Right? Because keep in mind, Broner has problems making weight at 140, but yet he's fighting, I mean, this fight, catch weight. I'm wondering whether Broner's getting cuffed around in the gym. Broner's calling out people like Keith Thurman. Hey, Adrian, first you have to agree to fight guys like Jesse Vargas at 147 before I take you seriously at 147 here. You know, really, what, what Thurman should say to him is, dude, you're, you're not even fighting at 147 these days. Right? I mean, I'm just guessing it's not Jesse Vargas, who, by the way, fought Manny Pacquiao at 147 recently. I'm guessing it's not Jesse Vargas saying, hey, let's fight at a catch weight at 144. Right? I'm guessing this is Adrian Broner. So I don't understand why Broner would be calling out a big hitter at 147. Of course, conveniently, he decides to wait until Keith Thurman is coming off surgery. Now, of course, guys fighting at catch weights like Adrian Broner want a piece of Thurman. Right? That might not be the case if Thurman, of course, returns to the ring, looks like Keith Thurman. Then a lot of these people who want to fight a rusty Keith Thurman are going to say, you know what, I, I've had a change of heart. Who are some of these other champs at 147? Does, does Jeff Horn still have a belt? Maybe I can go fight him. Right? So, uh, I have to boo the fight just on the ridiculousness of the catchweight. Let me also say, too. The catch weight really guts the fight a little bit for me. Right? Understand that Jesse Vargas hasn't fought at 144 pounds since 2014. Folks, it's it's 2018. In other words, I see the poster, I'm like, man, this just sounds like a great fight. Jesse Vargas against Adrian Broner. And then of course. I realized that Vargas is going to have to hit the sauna. He's going to have to come in light. He's going to have to come in lighter than he was against Manny Pacquiao, a fight in which Vargas goes the distance. Right? It, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, let me just say this. This is a major fight. Both guys are extremely talented. Vargas fought Timothy Bradley, hurt Bradley in the last round. The referee messed up at the end of the fight. For the boxing hardcore, I've put the highlights from that fight, including the last round, in my favorites folder here. Just know Vargas goes a distance against Bradley. He's not the one hurt at the end of the fight. The referee, if you could believe this, prematurely stops the fight right after Bradley gets badly hurt. Vargas is robbed of something like 10 seconds at the end of the fight. I'm just telling you, I, I saw the Julio Cesar Chavez-Meldrick Taylor fight. I'm telling you, a lot can happen 
in the last 10 seconds of a fight. Right? Very unfortunate. Understand, had Bradley hit the canvas, at a minimum, that would have been a 10-8 round. It would have impacted the scoring somewhat. Understand, too, that Vargas fought Khabib Alekverdiev, very tough, smooth boxer. Vargas outboxed him, right? Vargas, former light welterweight champion, former welterweight champion. But I'm going with Broner in this fight. The odds are practically even money. It's a very dangerous fight. But I'm going with Broner simply because Vargas hasn't weighed 144 for years. Broner fought Mikey Garcia at 140. Right? Broner also has only lost three times. Right? The Marcus Maidana fight, and people forget Broner goes the distance. Right? The Sean Porter fight. And, of course, the Mikey Garcia fight. Right? When Broner isn't fighting elite competition, simply put, in my opinion, and I know the public disagrees with me on this, he's one of the most dominant fighters in the pocket in boxing. And that's where I believe this fight's going to be fought because even though... Jesse Vargas has a four-inch height advantage. Jesse Vargas is not the kind of guy to get up on his toes, dance around the ring, and use his reach. Right? Vargas might stick and move for two seconds. Unfortunately, these rounds are three minutes long. Vargas can be lured into a shootout. Vargas has a less than 40% KO ratio. Broner has a 65% KO ratio and will be fighting a vet who's weight drained. Also, if you look at the guys who they both have fought, Tony DeMarco goes the distance with Jesse Vargas. Broner stops him. Khabib Alekverdiev goes the distance with Jesse Vargas. Broner stops him. Broner hits harder. Right? Let me also say, too, just the physiques of the men are going to take away some of Jesse Vargas' strengths. In other words, against a taller guy like Saddam Ali, Vargas has a style. It's kind of like Danny Garcia, where he leans down and you don't know if he's throwing the punch up top or if he's going to throw it to the body. Now, that works against guys who have longer upper bodies. Adrian Broner is all legs, right? He has a short upper body, and he's four inches shorter than Jesse Vargas. So Vargas isn't going to be able to really play those tricks with a shorter opponent, right? Broner's defense, too, in my opinion, is better than Timothy Bradley's defense. I don't see Vargas landing the kind of right hands that he lands against Timothy Bradley, right? So... In a fight at a catch weight that places Vargas at a disadvantage, that's going to be fought in the pocket against a defensive wizard who is shorter and has the bigger punch, I'm going with Adrian Broner. What I hope happens, though, is that the press asks such tough questions of Broner that the fighters reach an agreement to have this fight be a legitimate welterweight fight. I understand. The people negotiating these fights try to give their fighters as much of an advantage as possible. I get it. Right? The negotiators are doing their job when they're able to squeeze out a few extra pounds to help their fighter. Right? But it undercuts the integrity of the sport. If two former welterweight champs are fighting, have the fight at welterweight, especially when Broner's trying to call out a reigning welterweight champ in Keith Thurman. Especially when <laughs> Jesse Vargas just fought Manny Pacquiao at welter. Think about it. Manny Pacquiao didn't ask for a catch weight against Jesse Vargas. But yet Adrian Broner is. 
Adrian Broner, the guy who has problems making weight. Think about that. Ludicrous. So I like Broner in this fight, but it's dangerous. This is an even money fight. Let me just say this, though. If I were to hedge it, and it's an imperfect hedge because of the odds, as I said, this fight's a great fight. The casinos have priced it evenly. But if I were to hedge it, because I view Broner as a defensive wizard, because Broner himself has never been stopped. He's been knocked down. He's never been stopped. The play I like is Adrian Broner to win the fight, hedged with the over. Right? The only guy, in my opinion, who has a chance at an early KO. And keep in mind, Vargas stops Saddam Ali. If you look at Vargas's records, you're going to see some Vargas fights that went the distance. The other guy hits the canvas. Right? But in my opinion, the only person in this fight who has a chance at an early stoppage, especially at 144, is Adrian Broner. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me just close by saying, you know, I understand catch weights. Not that I'm ever a fan of catch weights, ever. But I understand catch weights when a lighter guy, let's say Kel Brook, is going to fight a guy a couple weight classes up, Golovkin, right? Now, Kel Brook's a man. So Kelbrook said, look, I want the middleweight title. No catch weight. <laughs> right? Kelbrook's a man. But if Kelbrook said, hey, give me a little consideration. I'm coming up from 147. Let's have this fight at 158. <laughs> you know, I would understand it. I'm not saying I'd approve of it. But I would understand it. I would think to myself, well, gee. Kell Brooks coming up 13 pounds, right? Okay, uh, you know, I understand the request for some consideration here, right? Although I firmly believe if you're fighting for a title at middleweight, the fight should be at middleweight, as it was with Kell Brook Golovkin. What I don't understand, what, <laughs> what I truly don't understand is a fight where one guy wins the title at 147. The other guy wins the title at, what, 47? Right? Later on, when both guys have lost their title, they decide, okay, let's fight. And the fight's taking place at 144. That gets a thumbs down from me. That gets a boo from me. Right? If I were a reporter and I were following these guys around and I was at some press conference to pub the fight, I would say, gee... Can you fellas explain to me why this fight is at 144? Whose idea was it? And why did that person think that was necessary here? Right? I mean, keep in mind, again, Broner's trying to call out Keith Thurman. Right? If, if Broner wants Thurman's title... What's he doing fighting at 144? If Jesse Vargas, who's 5'10", is stopping a guy who's currently the reigning champion at 154 pounds, what's he doing fighting at 144? Let me hear your thoughts. I look forward to reading them. Thanks for stopping by.